Hey everybody. Welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Feel Good Friday. I want to ask you a question. What do you think this is? Okay, so the obvious answer, it's a water bottle with presumably water in it. It is water. It's not something stronger. It is water. And this is what? Half full? Half empty? However you want to think about it. If you're an optimist, it's half full. If you're a pessimist, it's half, half empty. If you're a realist, it's like got water in it. There's something incredible about this water. It's clear. You can see through it. It's translucent, transparent. It is exactly what it says it is. It's water, H2O, hydrogen, oxygen. It is relatively um, chemical free. It's filtered. It's reverse osmosis. We get it from a company here in Wainwright because it tastes good. The water in Rain Wainwright is it's potable, but it's like really, it's pretty bad. So I drink bottle I drink water from we have a big dispenser like a water cooler that we use and we don't plug it in we just have co have more room temperature water to drink to take our pills to make coffee and tea things like that this simple thing this very simple thing makes me feel good there are days when I wake up and I have a raging headache not many I am fortunate I am very fortunate I am 52 years old and I have never had a migraine that I'm aware of I seldom get headaches. I mean, if I get a headache a month, I'm exaggerating. And when I get a headache, I mean like, oh, ow, maybe I should take a Tylenol. And by the time I go to the kitchen to find the bottle of Tylenol, I'm distracted by something else. The headache isn't so strong that it's so bad. Once, maybe twice a year, I have a headache that's like pounding, like bend over to tie up your shoes and feel like your head's going to explode pound. But when I do, I always realize to drink some water, it really helps. Lately, um, I've been noticing that when I get up in the morning and I do my daily office and because of how how far north we are in, in Wainwright, uh, when I get up about 10 after 6, I have my shower by about 6.30 or 20 to 7, I'm ready to say my daily prayers and I make myself a cup of coffee. I have several cups. I've got one that, that Kim gave me from, um, from Louisville, Kentucky. I've got this one, which has something written on the side of it that's really not appropriate. <laughs> I'll show it to you. Um, it was, I bought it on a lark. It's, it's the right size of a cup. Um, it's one classy lady. That's what it says. Um, but it has a lid on it so that it doesn't keep it warm, but it does keep it from spilling, which generally is a good idea for me because I'm a bit of a klutz. Um, I've got my wolf mug. I've got tons of mugs I use. I get up in the morning, make myself a cup of coffee in the dark, light a candle, take a sip of my coffee, then say, I spend 10 minutes in silent prayer, meditating being present with God um, and then take another sip and then I have some other prayers I say in the dark um, and then another sip of coffee and then around about seven or so I start I turn on the light and use my prayer, prayer book and I pray say my intentional prayers sipping away at my coffee well a bit a week ago I took a, the first sip of my coffee and my guts just went nuts like I was so like it hurt my stomach was hurting it's like what do I do and it's like and I this this voice not a voice voice but you know when some god speaks to you but doesn't use words you know i'm not crazy it happens sometimes you just know that god is trying to get something across to you and it's like no more coffee not in the morning it's like oh yeah okay tomorrow all right so i went to take another sip of coffee and as soon as it touched my my lips it was like oh i'm gonna be sick okay but i really needed something and i was freezing cold so I thought hot water. We have a Keurig machine and you can make coffee or tea from pods, but you can also be hot water. Like all it does is pour hot water. So I got rid of my coffee, made myself hot water. And it did, the, it, it did what you need to do. It settled my stomach. It helped me feel clear, helped me start clean up my sinuses, which were starting to kind of plug up. It was great. I just had hot water and started realizing how many times in my day do I put something into my system that I don't need? I drink coffee because I drink coffee, <laughs> like some coffees, um, like my friend Kim gave me some coffee. It tasted really good. But the coffee I use in my everyday pods, it's like, it's not good. It's really strong. My husband likes it. So I drink it. And I started thinking, how many times do I do something to myself in my my body, my prayer life, my just making general decisions? Because it's just the next easiest thing to do rather than necessarily the right thing to do. And so I've been trying to have I've been trying to drink hot water to begin my day and it seems to set me off in a better place. I still wake up 
and it still helps to clear the fuzz in my head and clear my eyes and all the stuff that the, the, having a sip in the morning does. But I don't need the caffeine and I don't need that taste in my mouth. So I've been drinking hot water and I've been trying. Well, right now I've got a coffee because, well, I need it today right now. But I'm trying to drink more water, realizing that water is something very simple and it purifies and it flushes things out of my system. It helps to refresh me. Think about it. If it's a really, really hot day and you're sitting in the sun or you've been out working or you've been gardening or something, isn't it refreshing to sit down with a cold glass of water? Or remember those days back when we weren't terrified about all the bacteria in the world and as kids we'd turn on the hose and drink from the end of the hose that that metal taste that's met that tasted awful but it was so refreshing because it was the cold water that comes out of the tap or remember how gross it was because the, the hose was lying in the sun and that first little bit of shot of water that comes out when you if you forgot to let it run first that warm stale metal tasting water but the fact that water is powerful, it gives us life and it's so simple. It's something that we, that we need. Our bodies are made like a huge percentage, like 70% or something of our bodies is made of water. And yet so many of us are resistant to simply having water because what? It's not fancy enough. It doesn't taste good enough. One thing that, that I've always enjoyed was a little bit of Mio. Um, a little drop of Mio can change the taste of water. Also, a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice in, in some water or to put some strawberry slices or something into a pitcher of water just infuses it with a little bit more taste and makes the water go down so much easier. But water is something simple that we need in our lives. It makes us feel good. It helps our bodies be cleansed. It helps us to, to see better, like our peepers here. It helps us to, our skin to be hydrated and not so dry, especially in the winter when it's so dry, having to keep, keep our skin hydrated. It's something that washes us. Last Sunday, we had baptisms in church and we used water to symbolically wash away the sin of the people being baptized, that they might enter into the family of God in complete cleanliness and holiness. Water is something very simple and yet it can be the most powerful thing. And I think in our lives, we really miss out when we look for something fancy, when we look for something incredible and flashy and, you know, something that maybe the neighbors don't have. When we dress, think about it. When you've seen a beautiful man or woman, and I'm sorry, it doesn't matter, gay or straight, we all notice beautiful people. We all see them and they don't have to be married to us. My husband is the first person to, to mention, to point out a beautiful woman walking down the street. And it doesn't bother me because I know he's on my arm. He's chosen me as his beautiful person and vice versa. I joke about some of the football players on the, on the NFL on Sunday afternoons with him and he knows totally it was okay. And my little confession here, Mark from Barnyard Build, Barn, Bar, was it called Barnyard Builders or Barn Board Builders or whatever it is. He, he's a gentleman and he's a, he's nice to look at too. But the thing is, the people that we notice, are they the people who are dressed garishly? Are they the ones who, who strut the walkway, the, the runways on, at, at, at Fashion Week in, in Paris with all the feathers and the hoops and the weird looking things that kind of look like if you touched it, it would fall apart? Or when we notice people who are striking, are they not usually the person who's wearing a well-cut suit or a nice jacket or whose hair just looks natural or whose makeup is gentle? Someone who looks comfortable in their own skin. Someone who smiles with radiance, even if they don't have perfectly straight white teeth. The things that we appreciate the most are often, I think if we really think about it, the things that are straightforward and simple and beautiful in themselves, like water. The very things we need in our lives, and I would argue things like God, are not difficult. They're not complex. They are not something that... that the average person can't, you know, wrap their head around and, and say, yeah, welcome into my life. The very things we need the most are things like water and sustenance, things like simple, good friends, work that we enjoy, the ability to rest and relax when we're not at work. We don't need flashy cars and big, you know, big engagement rings or trips to, you know, Vegas or places like that. 
What we need is to be able to look in the mirror and say, I am enough. I am beautiful as I am. God loves me. And I have these blessings around me. So as you head into your weekend, I would like you to feel good. But I would like to encourage you to think about the ways that you can feel good in really simple ways, ways that don't cost money, ways that don't have to be flashy, ways that can like water, something simple and as available to you as turning on the tap, ways that can remind you that the things that we truly need in life are usually very simple, very straightforward and very life giving. We don't need all the extras. We just need the simple. So as you head into your weekend, I pray that you find ways to find the simplicity and the ways to feel good with that simplicity in your life. Drink lots of water too. It's really healthy, really is. And I hope to see you Sunday for Gospel on the Go, either on this channel or on the Gospel on the Go channel. If you haven't hit subscribe, go for it. Hit notifications, hit that little bell, and then they'll pop up in your mailbox on, fr on Sunday mornings at 5 a.m. Mountain Time, 7 a.m. Eastern. If I remember to release it, sorry, about last Sunday on Gospel on the Go, it took me a little bit to remember to put it on there, but I did eventually. Um, but have a great weekend. God bless you. And hopefully I'll see you again Sunday or Monday for Church at Home with Rachel.